How many billionaires does it take to buy a government? Just three, says Kevin McCarthy, the House Majority Leader. And why should money moguls have the power to seize our constitutionally established Congress? Because money glazes over high crimes and misdemeanors with a honey dip brush. For the longest time, the Democrats tried to say they were the party of the American worker. And yet, when you look at the donations from individuals into the Republican Party, you are beating you are beating the Democrats in that regard. But they've got a handful of big, deep pocketed donors like Michael Bloomberg, like a Tom Steyer. Just think the three, uh, the the three individuals who are funding the Democratic Party, George Soros, um, You've got Michael Bloomberg, not just 80 million into the House, he put another 20 million to try to win the Senate. Then Tom Stiers, more than $120 million he has spent trying to win. But his main goal is trying to impeach President Trump. He brags that his impeachment list is bigger than the NRA list. Those three individuals are trying to buy our government in this process. It's very disturbing. Soros, Bloomberg, Steyer. Sounds like a law firm that will ransack the Constitution and fleece a nation out of its last dime. Buy the House, and they buy the government's pocketbook and spend it for their own game. And just what is their game? Soros is all about opening up societies where caravans of illegals, transvestites and cross-dressers, and abortions on demand will wrench open a closed society of traditional values and throw it into a hellhole that even a Fellini flick could never depict. And what's Bloomberg's gig? It's all about gun control and stripping the of their last defense against government tyranny, of which he wants to be the chief tyrant. It sounds like in your description on the on the climate front, you see a real vacuum of, of leadership. Do you see that on some of these other issues that you have been quite active on? Well, I think there's no leadership on keeping guns out of the hands of criminals, minors, and people with psychiatric problems, which this country should be ashamed that we're not doing. I think the Second Amendment gives you the right, and I'm happy it does, I suppose that we uh, have the right to bear arms. He who hesitates is pretending. We either have a Bill of Rights or we don't. There's no suppose. And Steyer's stunt? He's just a regular kind of guy, a mass millionaire who shows up at town hall meetings. Without further delay, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Tom Steyer. So, back on October 20th, the very first day we launched our petition, six people from Lansing signed on to impeach the president. <laughs> the American people definitely were sending a message. And that message was, we're not being hurt. And that message is really what we're talking about today. Returning power to the American people my name is Heather Ryan from Des Moines, Iowa, and I believe that Donald Trump needs to be impeached because he's treasonous, and that's the reason enough. My name's John West. I think we need to impeach the present president. We need a leader who does not lie. I'm Tony Davis from Des Moines, Iowa. I'm here because Donald Trump should be impeached because they don't call him Don the Con for nothing. Don the Con? <laughs> Leaders who don't lie? Come on, Steyer. Are those the best lines you can feed them? But like his big bucks buddies, he's got no positive thrust. Well, Democrats' chances of winning back the House appear to be growing, if that appears. If that actually happens, there's a chance that they may move to impeach President Trump. But one man, a billionaire investor named Tom Steyer, he doesn't want to wait. He's already started a full-fledged war to get President Trump out the White House. Bloomberg Businessweek's Max Abelson wrote a profile of Steyer, and he joins me now. Okay, I want to start off. If you can just explain to folks who don't know him, who is he? Of course. So the answer is interesting. I mean, he's like a classic Wall Street guy. He started at Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. Then he had a hedge fund. And not just like a small hedge fund. I mean, truly one of the biggest hedge funds in the world. He became a finance billionaire. 
but he kind of had like a reawakening. First, he became an environmentalist. And then, honestly, he basically had a second reawakening about six months ago, and he turned into this uh, American political figure. I mean, you might recognize his face from TV. Mm -hmm. He's basically funding an ad campaign to impeach Donald Trump. Oh, you do see him out on television a lot, but you know, Max, what really sort of was surprising to me, it, according to disclosed donations, Steyer actually spent more than the Koch brothers, than Sheldon Adelson, uh, Robert Mercer, during the last two election cycles. How is that possible? What do that's, you make of that? That's absolutely right. Well, just it's important to keep in mind that there's also dark money. There's donations that billionaires make that we just can't see because it's dark. But when it comes to disclosed donations, and there are a lot of them, Tom Steyer is the biggest donor in America in 2014, 2016, and, and he might be the biggest donor again in 2018. And that's because he's spending so much money on impeachment. And he's also spending a lot of money to bring millennials to voting booths in November. The thing about it is, though, he doesn't like see himself as like just another billionaire cutting checks, you know, to buy influence. Mm -hmm. He sort of sees himself, and part of what our business story is about, a business week story, is he sees himself as like this leader of a movement. He thinks he's, you know, he thinks America is in this crisis, this this cosmic crisis, and he's kind of the man who can help save the day. If Steyer says, or Soros, or Bloomberg says, then I say, put your money where your mouth is. Let's shackle the money moguls with campaign finance reform with restrictions and caps that will purge their dark money by full disclosure for every dollar spent. That way their deep pockets will only be deep enough to fit in their mouths. Talk about election meddling. Remember the song, Money Can't Buy Me Love? Well, they'll give all they've got to give and the Dems will love them too. They sure have a lot to give, but what they got won't go to you. Instead, their bucks will buy a republic whose constitutionally enacted democratic process will shrink into the agenda of a s***.